Uh, good work today. Good physical Tuesday. Uh, first, second down work on the short yard goal line situation. Defensive. Felt they had a very good practice. Uh, matching tempo. We're trying to match that. Simulate as much as you can. Offensively, really picked it up like the team and, and things we did. Uh, very productive day. Very productive day. How your uh, defensive tackle looking the injured ones? Good. I mean, uh, Eddie, Eddie practiced the whole practice. Now did a lot of drills. Kept him out of contact a little bit today, but, but uh, we'll, I will still be, you know, waiting to see how the week goes. But Eddie's in good shape. After Monday, there, I mean, did he have to go under extensive treatment, or it was kind of like normal? No, he's not wrong. He, he was ready to go by I mean, Friday, yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Eddie was. Were they all three ankle sprains? Or yeah, what? they were all ankle. Well, now one was a knee. One Which? was a knee. Now had me. Pretty comfortable, Derek Mitchell. Should you yeah, maybe Derek's get been the doing start? Great. Yeah, Derek's been doing really well. Naughty, all the I mean, Desmond, I mean, Roland, Desmond, I mean, uh, Holly, and uh, all those guys. I mean, they all been busted. <laughs> they uh, we get a lot of reps. We're repping four, five guys in there, so they good, keeping good rotation. So the other day, there was a team effort to kind of neutralize Big Beasley. You know, have guys chipping in and stuff like oh, yeah. that. How much of that though was Jameis getting rid of the ball? Well, all that. I mean, it all built into reading, getting the ball out, doing those kind of things. How did he do though against the Panthers? Obviously, the numbers did were excellent. Great, did excellent. Yeah, he did really good. I mean, they got to him a couple times, but you know they're going to occasionally. But he handled pressure, got hot routes out, got the ball out on time, threw the ball really well last week. Then off week, Chad Morris really threw the kitchen sink at you guys a couple of years ago. You guys getting the defense ready for just about any oh, contingency yeah, this yeah, so that's uh, this the thing Saturday? about off week. You don't ever know. You know what I'm saying? We got we got to play sound on all the different things they've done. And, you know, have formations, and there'll be some new things that you got to adjust to. We'll have to make adjustments during the game. Hopefully by our base rules and our way we teach conceptually, you'll be able to make your adjustments. I know you pointed out that, you know, a lot of teams are doing it now, but the fast pace, can it take a defensive coach out of it, you know, when they try to do stuff situationally, when they are moving at such a speed? It is, but, I mean, still, um, excuse me, there's a, you practice against it so much in your calls, I don't say it takes a defensive guy out. I really don't. I, mean, I don't. I think it's too common now. Now, you can go fast and limit it to a certain extent by how you get calls. But it's all based on how much your kids can learn, how much they can pick up, how much they can process. Can that work out in a way? Is your defense is strong enough? I mean, you get your defense is off the field and maybe 50 No, you're exactly right. That's, I mean, that's the downside. I mean, if, if you get three and out and they ain't on the field very long, their defense gets on the field very long. And, and that's really what happened. Probably in the Georgia game. Georgia was able to win the field position by pin them back a lot and win the field position by a lot in the second half. They got a few penalties and got behind the sticks and then didn't get anything going. And all of a sudden, it, you know, kept them on the field. Probably led to some of those. Things. I mean, it's, but that's that's football and whether you're going fast pace or slow pace. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's just football 101. How much of Cameron Irving, we talked about him in this matchup, but also as a leader, how much has he grown as a leader? He has. I mean, he really has. He's feeling comfortable in his shoes. You know, it's hard early because he just learned a new position, but he, he knows he's a player. He's doing a great job with our guys around him. And, and that whole that whole senior offensive line, there's a lot of good leaders in there. They're a very tight group. How has Cameron improved on what he was last year? Just, just get better. Well, I mean, he's getting better in his fundamentals, his knowledge of the game, doing making decisions quicker, processing it. Looks better, blitzes, twists, games. I mean, you know, you just he's processing that stuff so much quicker and recognizing it and coming off on things like that. I think he's other, stronger. I think the other day you said you guys are in what nickel like seventy one percent of the time. Yeah, because because the defense is always <laughs> three and four. I mean, the offense is always in three and four wise. So when you guys play a spread team like this, how much does the fact that that is almost your base package? How much does that help you guys? It, it does a lot. It does a lot because you look at snaps. I mean, it's funny when you look cut up almost everybody now is three and four wides, 70 percent at least of the time. It's, it's kind of football's changing. When did you, I don't know if there's a certain time point, but when do you say, all right, maybe we need to make our, our base a nickel packet as opposed to three, four, four, three, oh, whatever it is? They're all, there's no real, you say base, but you got to start from the other. Mm -hmm. Then you build in. That's the only way you can transition and teach conceptually. You still got to start from the originals. But when you start there, you miss a lot of base things for linemen and things that go in other packages. Mm -hmm. You got to start and expand out. But it feels like base because you play it. But how difficult is this weekend when you have a ton of recruits coming in? You're playing a huge game and all oh, the other is, challenges. I mean, you want to give them time, but you want to, you know, get mentally ready to play and get your kids mentally ready to play. Those are those are very trying times, no coaches. They're very trying times. They really are. But but they're good things. You play in big games, getting good players here, that's a good problem. Do you meet with them before the game? Yeah, I try to meet certain guys that come through and as many as I can or touch base with, see them on the field after the game, you know, all the as many as we can possibly get in. Easier for a night game, you got a little bit more time? Sometimes it is depending on when they get here, yes. Speaking of recruiting, you know, you talk about how valuable this is in rain days like this. Is it also a selling point when you're talking to kids? Oh, no doubt. I mean, you know, you get a facility that lets you develop. You know what I'm saying? So, that's very, 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 very,
you guys end up coming in here at all there? You no, stay outside? no, we stay outside. All right. We're good.